Hey guys, I'm Leo the Racing Driver. Welcome to Channel 51 GT3 Racing School. Today we are going to talk about the effect of tire pressure on lap times. Tire pressure is very important to the lap times of a car, and wrong tire pressure can even ruin an entire race. Those of you who follow F1 may remember that Max Verstappen, who was leading the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, blew his tire on lap 47 in June of 2021. According to the investigation, it was found that the wrong tire pressure was the main cause of the accident. Proper tire pressure can bring out the full potential of a tire, maximizing its grip to the ground. If the tire pressure is low, the middle part of the tire will arch upwards because the structure is thicker on both sides, thereby reducing the grip to the ground. Moreover, when cornering, the tire may be pulled by the lateral force, and there will be gaps and air leakage. This can cause the tire to fall out of the ring. In contrast, if the tire pressure is too high, the middle of the tire will be lifted up, which also reduces the contact area between the tire and the ground, so that the adhesion of the tire to the ground is reduced. Generally speaking, there is a recommended tire pressure value given by the tire manufacturers according to its running condition. The technician team will then calibrate a hot tire pressure value based on the recommended value, taking into account the track condition and the driving habits of the driver. Then according to the hot tire pressure value, the cold tire pressure value will be calculated inversely. Conditions such as weather and track temperature also need to be taken into account when calculating. For drivers with intense driving styles, the technician needs to lower the tire pressure prior to the race. Conversely, for drivers with a gentle driving style, the cold tire pressure values can be increased. Here we recommend that everyone, whether you take your performance car to a track day or to run a race, the first vehicle setup should be to determine the appropriate tire pressure. Some of the top racing teams even set different tire pressures for each of the four wheels depending on the number of left turns and right turns. Next, I will share with you how to adjust tire pressure correctly. If you are driving a racing car, the technician staff will set the standard tire pressure for you based on the track conditions of the day, and you just need to adjust it according to your driving habits. Since I am used to a car with a more nimble rear, I usually increase the rear tire pressure to reduce its contact area with the ground. Of course, if you want the front of the car to have greater traction when entering the corner, you can increase the contact area between the tire and the ground by reducing the front tire pressure, therefore increasing its grip to the ground. If you're here for track day and you're driving your own performance car, here's another way to do it. First of all, you need a proper tire pressure gauge. Once the track is open, you can drive your car to run two to three laps on the track. After the tire reaches the working temperature, you can then return back to the maintenance area. It should be noted here that when returning to the maintenance area, do not slow down, but keep the same speed so that the tire pressure will not drop. Then you can get out of the car to check the tire pressure. All performance cars have a nameplate on the B pillar with the standard tire pressure number which is the most accurate tire pressure value given by the manufacturer. You can deflate the tire pressure to the standard in order to get the most typical driving performance. At the same time, you can adjust the tire pressure according to your own driving speed. Now the following adjustments are all small-scale ones. On an all-day track day with no sudden weather changes, this is basically all you need to do. By the way, don't forget to restore your tires to the standard pressure when you leave, this is because the deflated car won't go very fast on the street, so the tires won't reach the standard pressure. In this way, we have completed the easiest tire pressure calibration. That's all for today's episode. If you want to learn more about the technology of racing cars, let us know in the comments section. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.